All right, now while well, we're waiting for the cylinder head bolt as well as the Healy coils to get here, so therefore we can finally finish reassembling the engine, let's work on uh, finally addressing the issue of the chain rubbing up against the frame right here and these trailing arms kind of eating away at the metal. It does it on top as well as on the bottom, so yeah, that's, uh, that's not great. It's kind of eating away at a lot more metal than I thought, but uh, let's, finally, uh, let's finally address and fix this issue. Now before taking the trailing arms off the frame, I marked with a sharpie where the edges of the chain goes, therefore I can make sure to get this perfectly lined up. Now I forgot that I need to grind the paint off to be able to weld this and that's going to get rid of my sharpie marks and I want to make sure that I get these, you know, perfectly lined up with the chain. So yeah, let me, uh, let me grind the paint off and then I'm going to put the trailing arms back on the frame, put the chain back on so therefore I can make sure to get these lined up perfectly with the chain. Yeah, it is not hard to remove the paint off of this thing. The paint that I chose kind of sucks. Also, I may weld this and then grind it down flat because it's almost eaten away, almost all the way through the metal. So yeah, let me weld that and fix that. Now, this paint job looks absolutely horrid. Uh, honestly, I have no idea why I didn't use primer first when uh, before painting this green paint on there. Now, the black spray paint that I use for the main chassis, that paint is paint and primer, so I didn't need to use primer. But I don't know why I didn't think of using primer for this paint, because this green paint wasn't that paint and primer mixed spray paint that I really like and it works great. This is some other kind of brand of paint. And honestly, I really should have used primer because uh, yeah, this stuff uh, this stuff just flakes off super easy. These, these, this looks horrible. The, all the, both trailing arms, the paint is just falling off everywhere. So let's, uh, let's finally fix this. I'm gonna wire wheel all the paint off, which is honestly probably not gonna be that hard. It's just gonna be super messy. I'm gonna wire wheel all the paint off and then paint this with primer then paint it with the green paint. So yeah, because this there's no way I'm leaving this. This looks horrid. Let's fix it.
So I wasn't able to get all the green paint. Uh, the stuff in the corners are really hard stuff to reach. I don't think that's going to scratch off easily, so let's just we can leave that. It's more just the outside that scratches easily. So now found this. It's flat gray primer. So let's paint this thing. All right, now while I'm painting the trailing arms, let's work on finally finishing rebuilding this engine. Now, for those who don't remember or haven't haven't watched the last video, I started putting the cylinder head on. I started tightening all the bolts, except one of the bolts just would not tighten down. I tried forcing it. I think I messed up the threads of the bolt, tr forcing it, and then I backed it out, and I could just feel it just destroying all the aluminum threads in this hole as I was backing the bolt out, and sure enough, these threads are are munched. So I got new cylinder head bolt. I ended up getting two of them, just in case, just in case I mess up again. Uh, we now have a backup, so we now have two of them, as well as I got a Healy coil kit. So now, unfortunately, unfortunately, I could not find a Healy coil kit with longer with longer coils. I guess this is like the standard size of Healy coil as far as length and how many threads. I, I ideally need like a two or three times this amount of threads, but I just, I could not find them in the threads that these bolts are. These are nine millimeters by 1.25. You can find them for eight millimeters, 10 millimeters, but of course you can't find them for nine millimeters. So I'm gonna do a test. I'm gonna take a scrap piece of aluminum. I'm gonna drill the hole, do the threads and everything. And I'm gonna see if I can thread two of these down the same hole, and because I, I, I'm not sure if just one of these is gonna be strong enough. And I'm not sure if trying to have two Healy coils down the same hole, I'm not sure if that's gonna create some weird threading issue where it binds up or something. So that's why, let's do a test first before we do it to this one. <laughs> Just to simulate doing this for real, let me put Loctite on this. I don't have to do it, on, I'm gonna do it in, on the internal threads only, because you don't want it to, definitely don't want it to uh, get on the inside of the helicoil. All right, first helicoil is in place. Supposed to break that. Now, how do we, first I'm going to see if I can just thread the second one down in the same manner with leaving that tab in place and then just breaking it and seeing if uh, the bolt will thread down both of these. Alright, that's now hitting the second one. Oh, whoops, I see what I did. Uh -oh. This is why we do a test. I threaded it too far, and now the first, and now I can't back it out. All right, glad I did a test. That completely messed up. Yeah, I threaded it down, and now the beginning of the second one is now resting on top and not next to the end of this first one. And now I can't, now I can't back it out. Well, let's try again. Take two, this is why I drilled two holes. Let's try again. And it says to use red, th red thread lock, which makes sense. Break it. And see if the bolt will go all the way down. Yeah, that worked. Look at that. It totally worked. Awesome. Alright, test successful. Does work. 
Now I know how to do it, so now we just gotta do it for real and not mess up. If I mess up on the engine, then I'm not sure. Uh, can I do a Healy coil on a Healy coil? I don't know. Maybe I don't want don't want to do that. All right, here goes nothing. Let's hope I don't mess this up. All right, I did it. Both Healy coils are in place. I'm able to thread this bolt all the way down. It threads nice and easily, and I can feel it hit the bottom, and I can back it all the way out, so. Awesome, crisis averted. I was able to fix it, thankfully. Nice, okay, now we can resume rebuilding this thing. That was fun, hopefully that never happens again. All right, that was nerve-wracking. <laughs> the whole time I'm just like, I'm tor torquing it down, I'm just like waiting, 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 and just hoping that you don't feel the dreaded, just tightening, 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 loosen. That is <laughs> the worst feeling ever. But uh, luckily, that didn't happen. That would have been an absolute nightmare. All right, let's start putting in the, uh, the cams and all that stuff. Set the timing on this. And then we also have to uh, check the clearances with the valves. Well, that was fun. Hopefully I don't have to do that again. I just spent the last four or five hours uh, checking all the valve clearances. I didn't bother filming it because it really took me forever to do, but I measured all the valve clearances. I wrote them down and then I had to take all this stuff back apart. So therefore I can check the, uh, check the shims and then measure them and then see like, okay, I got to go uh, 1.5 bigger or smaller or whatever and I just changed all the shim. Luckily I had a, uh, a valve shim kit that fit perfectly for this engine. I kind of forget what I bought this for, but I, uh, I found this on the shelf and it ended up being perfect for this engine. So that was nice. I didn't have to buy a new one. And uh, yeah, I had to put all, measure all of them, check the uh, big, the Surprisingly, there was only like four that I didn't have to change. All the other ones were, there was two that I were off by a little bit. All the others were off by a lot. So, and I'm not sure if that's because I lapped the valves or maybe it was just that bad from when I was first built. I'm not, I don't know, but it's, it's good now. I put it back together, tightened everything, tightened everything, and then checked all the clearances again and they're all within spec. So uh, that's good. That's over. I don't have to do that again, hopefully. So uh, now now it's just the um, the finishing touches. We got to put the valve cover on, intake boots. I uh, got to put the oil pan on, on here. Got to tighten this and just get the starter motor and everything. And then this, this engine is finally ready to put it back on the frame. I'm still in the middle of painting the trailing arms and everything. I'll put another coat of paint on it tonight let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow I'll finish uh, putting this thing back together. The paint should be dry and ready for the trailing arms to go back on the frame. Then we can finally put this engine back in the frame.
All right, so the manual says, uh, oil capacity, following engine overhaul, dry engine, new filter is 3.8 liters, which I looked up and it's apparently four of these. So let's just, that's a lot of oil. It's one quart, so. How long do I need to let this Honda bond? Uh, it takes 15 to 16 hours to set to a rubber-like consistency. It's definitely not been that long. I didn't think of that. Should I not be putting this uh, oil? Uh, because I just put the Honda bond for the oil pan like a couple hours ago. Let me put one quart in here, just so the uh, the oil doesn't seep out of the oil pump. Put the engine in, and then I'll put in the uh, the rest. How's that sound? All right, engine is now finally fully reassembled. We still need to do the throttle bodies and spark plugs and all that stuff. We'll do that, all that once we, once it's in the frame. Now, this thing looks nice and fresh. It, uh, it looks clean. It's probably not gonna be this clean for much longer. As soon as I take it out for another ride, it's gonna get all muddy and dirty again. So I'm just enjoying how clean this thing looks now. Now, there's actually, uh, now I still have an, another, like, five or six bolts that I'm not really sure where they go. There always seems to be like extra hardware once you rebuild something like this. There always seems to be like extra hardware where it's like, I don't know where this stuff goes. Did I miss anything? I don't know, hopefully not. Um, I don't know. There's still a couple things I need to install, like uh, throttle bodies and other stuff. So maybe uh, maybe that's what these are for, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't forget anything, but uh, yeah, those are those are left. But anyway, I still need to install the rear suspension. I just finished painting the trailing arms. Those have been drying uh, overnight and most of today. So let's get the rear uh, trailing arms installed, get the rear suspension back into place. I will be putting new chain on this because the chain was pretty worn out. So new chain, once all that stuff's installed, then we can finally get this engine back into place. All right, that wasn't so hard. All 
All right, so I think I let the Honda Bond uh, dry for long enough. It's been overnight. It's been at least a. Uh, it's been at least almost a full day, so let's put the rest of the oil in this thing. So this time I bought some K&N &N air filters that are uh, a lot better than just a stock air filters for the CBR 1000, and these are cleanable, so instead of having to get new ones when they're dirty, you just uh, you clean them. So. Now ideally, I really want to because I, I don't want to blow this engine up again and we're probably going to be running this vehicle in dusty conditions like we always do. Uh, I really want to do a modification where I have a second air filter box somewhere and then that there's like a giant air filter then that air filter box goes to this air filter box and so it's like double air filtration. That's ideally what this vehicle really needs because uh, I just, I don't want to, I spent all this money and I don't want to have to rebuild this thing again and knowing the places I take it, it's going to be dusty, it's going to be sandy and uh, I don't, I honestly don't think that just two air filters is going to be enough filtration for, for this engine. But uh, uh, honestly, I have no idea where I would put that second air filter box. Uh, there's really no room for it to have a decent sized one and I don't want to have it small and then uh, restrict the airflow and affect the uh, the performance of this engine. So for now, for now I'm just going to put these air filters in here because uh, we're getting ready for another Durham, Durham Town trip and I'm going to try to run this in not dusty conditions that much and just clean the air filters as much as possible and uh, I do want to do that modification eventually but just for now just hopefully these will be good enough and then later on I will hopefully be doing that modification to get uh, a second air box in this thing to have double filtration now I've probably shown wiring this thing up uh, probably a dozen times by now so I'm gonna skip that I'm not gonna bother showing it or recording it and I'll just we'll, I'll come back once it's all wired up and we're ready to fire this thing up yeah, one of these days, I'm going to neaten up this wiring and put it, you know, inside like a wiring box or something, but today is not one of those days. This gas is a little bit old, but uh, that's all I have. So. Uh... This may actually be the gas that's from the last Durham Town trip. So maybe like three, what was it, like three, four months old? Is that too old? I don't know. All right, moment of truth, if this thing will fire up. It's probably gonna take a couple seconds for the fuel to, uh, to prime and everything. All right, here goes nothing. a little bit because I used uh, WD-40 to clean the headers so it's just burning that WD-40 off so that's why it's smoking a bit yeah this thing sounds stronger it sounds like it's idling better it sounds like it's running better last time we had it at Durham Town it was just it was a little rough it was a little like low idle and didn't sound great but now this thing is uh now it sounds like it like it used to sounds healthy. It sounds so much better. So much better than it did last time. 
Alright, so I want to verify that the clutch still works and everything, and the gears all work, so... I haven't put the seat yet in, but... Should be able to still get in this thing. Clutch works. All right, it's all reassembled. It works. It runs. The clutch works. The gre the gears work. Uh, and this thing, it sounds awesome. This thing has a really big, deep rumble to it, which is uh, awesome. It sounds like it sounds the best it's ever been. Now I did look up uh, the braking procedure on this engine. First, I looked up the manual, and the manual says that, especially for a rebuilt engine with brand new pistons and piston rings. It says the braking procedure is just like, tr take it easy for like the first 300 miles, don't lug the engine, don't go over, I think it said like five, four or 5,000 RPM, just take it easy, and then after 300 miles, change the oil. I'm not even sure if I go 300 miles in a year with this vehicle, so, uh, but I did look up a, a forum on Google. I found like a CBR1000 forum and people were asking like what's the braking procedure on a brand new CBR1000 and people were saying, some people were saying uh, to drive it like you stole it for you know the first couple miles or the first you know two three hundred miles and then change the oil other people were saying drive it normally and then change the oil then others are saying drive it super easy and then change the oil so I don't know, but this is not a re this is not a brand new engine. This is a rebuilt engine, so maybe I should just follow the manual because me and Dirt Gear we're getting ready for another Durham Town trip. I know I've already had this vehicle at Durham Town twice now. This will be the third time, but I really want. I originally wanted to have the two seater, the mini trophy truck project, ready for this trip, but that did not happen. I am months away from getting that thing even running, so I wanted to have some vehicle ready. Or for this Durham Town trip, so I had to get this vehicle ready, and I really, I, if I have to take it easy for the first, at least for the first day driving this thing, I really want to do that before this Durham Town trip, so I may just take this thing to Brown Mountain, drive it around for a day, take it easy, don't lug the engine, don't rev it super high, and then just change the oil, then it should be good after that, because I really don't want, I don't want to do that at Durham Town, I don't want to have to drive it easy at Durham Town, but anyway, it's finally reassembled, it's finished, it works. I, I, I still want to do some type of modification to this airbox to make it to where it has some type of pre-filter. I just, I, honestly, where am I going to fit another air filter box? Uh, I just, th there's no room. I could put it, like, the only spot for it is, like, right up here, but then it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not having it outside the frame. That looks ridiculous. So I do want to figure out some way to have a, a secondary air filter. So therefore, there's two because I'm, I'm just not sure if the if the, the if the cane and air filters are going to be enough for the dust clouds that I drive this thing in. But uh, I'll figure that out uh, before the Durham Town trip. So anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you uh, in the next video.